Okay, here's the first of several videos for class number two. Um, I didn't have a really good collection of videos for ME370, so I wanted to uh, create these, and I have the wrong date right here. It says fall 2019. This is fall of 2021, and I'm making new videos to uh, try to be consistent with my other courses where I have almost every video that I could ever want, but probably will make more. But I don't have enough for these um, classes in ME370, so we're going to do, this is a, a review of mechanics and materials. Um, it's going to be a class three, we're going to combine the stresses. Here we're going to talk about basic stresses, and uh, so I wanted to go through this and pick it apart. Um, it's going to be a lot of work. Don't know if I want to do this. All right, so anyway, let's see. Um, uh, so we're talking about axial and bending stresses, uh, moment of inertia. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, and then we're going to do stress uh, uh, shear stresses. So we have normal stresses and shear stresses. This first um, this f first video is just going to be about normal stresses. So we have to ask ourselves a really basic question: What is stress? And I'm going to ask this question probably repeated uh, several times throughout the semester. Um, what is stress? And so how would you explain it to uh, in layman's terms? Or just as the simplest way that you could say, you could say that uh, school is stress, being mechanical engineering is stress. No, uh, by stress, we mean the distribution of internal loads within a part um, within a material, we could call it anything we want, but it's the distribution of internal loads. So if we apply like a stress onto something like in this shaft right here, and we're twisting it, well, how, what happens inside the thing? So what we want to do is we have to break the thing apart and look on the inside and see what kind of loads. So the big thing we need to do is create a free body diagram to chop the thing apart so we can see what's the internal loads and then we put uh, those internal loads and we calculate the basic kinds of stresses and then we combine them together. And now we know what's happening on inside. So uh, if we do a finite element analysis of the thing, which maybe you have some experience with, we'll do some in this course um, to try. That's a really good way to kind of see how the internal loads are being distributed because they show you like a little color uh, uh, contour plot of what those internal loads are doing to the part and how the stresses are being distributed to them. All right. So um, what are the two main kinds of stresses? Well, we could actually um, break them down in several different ways, but what I'm referring to is normal stress and shear stress. And just like the name, they don't mean normal like as an ad abnormal. They mean perpendicular. So there's normal stress, which is perpendicular stress and then there's shear stress which is in the plane that's like a shearing kind of motion that shears onto the thing and we draw it in two dimensions like this right and i'm going to make every all these tension they don't have to be tension they could be in compression but the normal stresses are either in tension or compression right so i'm going to draw them on all sides and we use, if this is going to be an X and Y, we go ahead and we put a coordinate in the middle right here. And there's X and there's Y. And we use sigma and we say sigma X up for there. And we say sigma Y from here. So those are, these are perpendicular to those faces right in there. If we were going to have instead have a X, Y, and Z, they would show up like this. Here would be X, sigma X, sigma Y, and then we'll draw a line that's uh, a parallel to this, sigma Z, like that. There'd also be, because we don't necessarily need to label these other sides right here, because these has to be in equilibrium. So this is actually sigma y, and this is sigma x too. And so we don't we don't even need to actually draw them in there, but it's nice to be consistent right there. So we could try to draw those arrows; they're equal and opposite. 
Now, when it comes to shear, if we're just in two dimensions, or like we call, like to call this plain stress, that means there's no stresses in coming out of the page at us, right? So this is the case of a uh, uh, plain stress. It's in one plane, not that it's non-fancy, but it's in a single plane. Um, I'm going to draw this as positive right here, right? Um, am I, am I going to be correct in that? I think so. Oh, anyway, um, so this is what shear looks like right there. That shear, and we're going to call this tau x y, right? And we don't have to do this in this course, but want to keep track and want to be consistent, what we usually mean is this is the face and this is the direction. So this is the X face, right? This is the, it's the face that's perpendicular to the X. And notice it's going in the Y direction. That makes that X, Y. Therefore, there's another stress that would be on this face right here, right? Let's talk, let's wait for a second before we draw that in. If we have to be in equilibrium, if this is going upwards, we need to have another guy that's going downwards on this guy. And so we might call this tau xy, right? Because it's on the x face in the y, it's a, but it's on the negative x face, but it's going in the negative y direction, right? So that we say negative, negative, it would also be a positive value. So there's a positive face, positive direction. We might consider that to be a positive shear. We, in my way of approaching stuff in this course, we're not going to go positive and negative that way. We're going to look and observe and make that determination, not by sign conventions, by but by observation. I think it's much more meaningful to digest what's actually taking place. Now, we've balanced this thing out vertically but what about rotationally this one is trying to make it go counterclockwise this is trying to make it go counterclockwise so it needs to balance out so there needs to be a shear stress that direction right there that's equal to and opposite from this and also right in there so that right there is enough information. You don't need to draw anything more that's a completely defined stress element because it's just understood that this is equal to that and this is equal to that, and this is equal to that. All four of those shear stresses are all equal to each other, but they balance the thing out. They keep it from translating and from rotating. It's in complete static equilibrium, right? Um, so what else do we need to know about? Okay, so yeah, and, and if we were gonna go, if we, we could call this one tau y x, because it's the y face in the x direction. And But notice that both of them are positive. Right, it's in the positive y face and in the positive x direction. So it all it too, and so we could call this tau y x, but it's equal to tau x y. And if we were going to do more stuff with stresses, we'd often make a matrix out of them, and we would see that that matrix would be uh, a symmetrical along the diagonal. And so those ones that were like opposite, those would be the other faces that would be right there. That's why it's symmetrical because uh, we've got, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look um, when we do uh, some transformations and we'll see th when that comes up. But just notice this is the big idea. Now, if we want to go three dimensions right here, just as once again, we don't do this a lot, but we will uh, bring it up in terms of derivations and things. Um, if we were going to put this stress onto there, that would be that stress right there. And that would be that stress right there, right? So that would be the tau xy. And of course, that's the tau yx. But here's the other shears that could take place, right? Um, I'm going to try to do all positive ones. Here's the positive z face. And there's the, it would be coming up that direction right there. Right, so coming out, that would be the tau z y. Z face y direction. It needs to have a buddy that's coming down in that direction right there, right? That's the tau y z equal to the tau z y, just to be balanced. Now, if we were going to go in the tau z x, right, be on the z face in the x direction, it would be this guy right there. Right, and that would be the tau zx, and he would have a buddy equal and opposite 
not necessarily opposite, but equal there. And so that that line goes to the wrong spot, doesn't he? it? Goes to right there. And then you would know that this guy right here, he would be the tau x z, right? And so you can see that all they all balance out. When those aren't present, when there's no sigma z, when there's no tau z y, and there's no tau z x, we have the case of plane stress in the x y. Right? And we could do that in any direction that we would want to, right? There's a lot of information right here, but it's just to try to organize our head, our heads about this stress element. Um, I'm going to create a cartoon character called Stressy the Stress Element at some point. Um, for dynamics, I have a cartoon. You should check them out. Uh, for my dynamics uh, engineering, the Engineering Dynamics Course Companion is a book I wrote uh, for dynamics uh, to help students. It's not a textbook. It's like an extra example problems and dynamics so check out that playlist uh that i'll, I'll share um but i have my newt dog and wormy are my cartoon characters uh for uh, dynamics i need a good cartoon character for stress elements and i'm gonna have stressy the stress element i think he's gonna be the guy right and, and i'm gonna draw him like he's gonna be like a little cube and he's gonna have strainy he's gonna be his buddy but he's gonna have like i think he's gonna give him hamburger helper um hands like this right here Oh, that was a terrible hand. And I'm going to give, I think I'm going to give him work boots, right? I, and they're, so like, they're, they're like, look like this right here. There's going to be my work boots. And here's, okay, so here, here's that the front of the work boot. And he's coming around, around there. It's because he's an engineer, right? So he's got work boots on. He's got like engineer boots on there. And he's always a little stressed. A little stressy, the stress element. Um, I don't know. He's not that great of a character. I thought about me having Bolty the Bolt, right, and Nutty the Nut, maybe nuts and bolts for engineering stuff. I don't know. I have a good one for fluid mechanics um, that I'll share with you sometimes. Is Wetted in Vapes, where the characters that I use for, uh, um, but I haven't written a book for that yet. I might, I might have more of that done than the other. So I might write my book. Uh, this would be probably for mechanics and materials more than, and but continue over in this class. We see Shafty the shaft. Mm, how about Dory the door handle? We'll get back to them. All right. So anyway, here is um, a big time review of the different kinds of stresses all in one table. Right. So here's the different kinds of stress, and I have whether it's normal or shear. What the distribution, I'll draw a little diagram for what the, no, 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 what kind of, okay, so whether, what what type of distribution, right? Because remember that stresses are the distribution of internal loads. So we'll write this, I'll write a little drawing that we should associate with it, and then a typical equation, right? And once again, this is all a re review. So axial stress, axial stress pulls on things, right? So um, if we're going to uh, take a look at our um, door handle as I brought up in my um, in the first class right in the statics we had our door handle all right so if we're looking if this is the location of our stress element and that's what these guys are our stress elements axial is either pushing or pulling right onto this section right there so either it has it, it, it's going to be a force that starts out over here but maybe it when we comes down to here it's going to be pressing on and either compressing or pulling it's either intention or compression that's happening onto the stress element and those are normal normal to the face right there so that's normal and this juice, and, and, and we, can, we consider it to be, if the load is pushing right here, we consider it to be norm, uh, um, uniform across the entire face. So this is uniform. And if we would have a little drawing of the thing, I'll make it round. And let's make it intention. And I show all of these little arrows, they're all the same length to make them right here. And we know that stress, axial stress, and we might even call it, give it a subscript of axial, is going to be equal to simply F over A, where that F is being applied like right here, right? So right, this is the section where I've cut the thing. So these, this is a distribution that kind of shows that this is 
This is the stress that's inside um, the piece. And like if you want to find that force, it's going to be that stress, that axial stress times that area, right? Back and forth. Bending is also going to be normal, right? So bending is due to moments, right? It's due to a moment that would maybe go about the z-axis, which is this axis right here. Um, a z-axis would, would cause this to start to pull apart or to push together, right? It's rotating about an axis that's like right here. There's the z-axis and it's rotating about there. So it's going to cause tension. If it's a moment that's coming up this way, let's say, it causes compression there and tension there. This is this is pushing together, this is pulling apart. But then like if it's the other way, if it's a moment that's coming this way right there, it's going to be pulling on this and pushing on that. And trying to dissect those is, is the way. So this is, this is also normal, but now it's going to be a linear distribution, right? It's zero through what we call the neutral axis, right? So if it's about the Z axis that we're, we're doing a bending onto the thing, the axis that passes through the center right here, right, is where zero stress uh, is taking place, right? Through the head, the, in this case, it's symmetric, it's a circle, so it's midway point right there, and it's tension on the top, compression on the bottom, let's say if we're going that way, right there, right? There's tension, and then compression, but then in the middle it's zero, so it has a distribution that if we had, like, let's make it something that looks kind of bendy right there. All right, so that thing is getting bended, bent, and here is the neutral axis. We'll call it the NA. And if it's bending that way, it's going to have tension here, and it's going to have compression here, right? So um, trying to draw this little thing a little bit better. Let's see, I'll make it like that. And so we draw like that, right? So you've seen this before, right? Where you have little arrows. Well, the arrows are showing this tension at the top, compression on the bottom. And this one right here for bending, the equation, I'll just write bend right there, is going to be MC over I. Like a lot of times they'll call that Y. Right, but but more commonly we care about the, the the maximums right here at the outside fibers. C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outside fiber where we're considering the stress. So it just rolls off the tongue, MC over I. Um, but it could be MY over I if you want to, uh, and that that describes the distribution at any certain point from the neutral axis right there. And I'm not going to mess around with sign conventions once again, uh, because I want you to understand the thing as opposed to just relying on whether it's something positive or negative. I want you to be able to visualize whether something is intention or compression, which is what those signs are going to say. Say. So these could be either tension or compression, these axial and bending, depending on the loading scenario. Now we have torsion. What is torsion? Torsion is a twisting motion. Twisting motion along a long axis. And it does a shearing action, right? It tends to, if you have a stress element in there, and my stress elements are these little eraser bits, and... Uh, they're all over the place on my desk here. But what we could do is I could even break one, right? I could shear it apart, right? I'm cutting it. That's a shearing action. So this is a shear stress, right? And what kind of distribution is it? Well, it's a linear distribution. And it, well, spell it the correct way. And it's very similar. Uh, um, you could think of it as the some analogous stuff to the bending, right? Um, because if we um, have a twisting action, let me see, I'm going to draw this with a circle. This is a lot of times we want to have like a, a circular shaft onto the thing. And if you were to take a look at the distribution of the thing, it looks like, like here and there, right? So we have distribution through the cross section that looks like that. Of course, also, by the way, we could also make it, uh, you know, that's just over there. We could also make it like this right here, right? 
So we have this thing where it's getting larger as it goes to the outside of the piece right there, right? So as we, and it's due to a torque uh, that's onto this thing. So this torque that's being placed onto the thing is moving this thing around. Like I should have drawn up here, I should have drawn that we have a moment that's causing this thing to bend, causing the bending. Here's a torque that's causing the torsion and it's causing a shear just like this guy did right there. It sheared the part off. It was along the face of this thing that was shearing it apart. And it's shear stress is a tau, right? And I'll just go T-O-R-Q. That's my torque. I don't know why I do that. And its equation is T-R over J, right? So we, I, I went ahead and, and said, I, I didn't mention that this is the area moment of inertia. Um, and this is the polar area moment of inertia. And we'll talk about those in uh, the next page. I'm not sure if I want to make a second, a separate video uh, for that. Um, okay, now we get into uh, two that we don't use, uh, aren't nearly as, th these are the big, the main three. This next one right here is uh, useful and important. We don't want to like just completely ignore it, although sometimes it's small enough uh, that we can ignore. It's something called transverse shear. And then we have like maybe a specialized subset of transverse shear, right? So transverse shear, and I don't have my uh, little display things. I usually have these little um, uh, uh, cards uh, that I pass out. Maybe I could pause this and show you. Um, to demonstrate the idea of transverse shear. It's a little more difficult to uh, understand, um, but it is, I mean, obviously I told you it's uh, 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 shear. Um, and here, its distribution is parabolic. It's got a, par generally, generally speaking, a parabolic distribution. And what it really looks like, and so let's say that we have uh, this this is the part that we're taking a look at. All right, so there is a force. If there's a force down that's being pushed down on here, and we did a free body diagram, it has a reaction force right here. That reaction force causes, is in the line. It's in line with that face right there, right? And it causes a shear, but its distribution is a little weird, and I'm not going to go through and, and use the, the shear flow uh, calculation that you'll see in a lot of things, because, because we we're trying to just apply this stuff and not get buried too much in the, the fundamentals are important in understanding where it comes from, and I'll try to describe that. But for the most part, we just want to kind of understand it and use it, right? So we have a force that's coming up that way, which we know will create is shearing across that stress element. And we might think it's shearing across this stress element, but it doesn't, it turns out it doesn't do much to the stress elements that are in line with that shearing action. It really only affects the stuff that's, uh, well, it really affects the stuff that's right, right to the side of, of the, the path that it's taking, right? So right here, and right here, those two stress elements that are happening right there, right there, if the force is going this way, they really get a transverse shear. The same thing true if we had a force placed in this direction, which would mean that we have a reaction on that direction. Now, this force that's coming in that direction doesn't really do anything to that one and that one, but it affects the ones to either side. Right, so the what what you can really think of is these things are supporting that load. There is a force applied here. There's a reaction force right there. So there must be a and there's a force in the same plane as the face of that of that stress element. So that is the transverse shear, and it ends up being a parabolic distribution. So if we were looking down at the face of one of these things, right? So if you're looking down the face and we had a force that's coming like that right there, and we were to make a plot of what that distribution looked like, it looks a little bit like that, right? And we could draw some arrows right in there. And right here is where the max is. But it's less and less, it gets to be zero right here and right there, 
but it's maximum right here, and it's going to be the same over there, right? So this is just a graph of what that distribution looks like of this thing right here. And we could think of that as V right there. That's the same V from our shear moment diagram, right? That's the shear that's taking place. It's the shearing that's in line um, with it, that's going across the B. Like if this was if this was the beam right here, and we had a forces right there. It would be the shear that's going across this face right there. And but it ends up in a weird spot. It ends up right there at the neutral axis if it's the, like a standard like two dimensional beam that we're looking at, which is kind of weird because the bending is being maximum away from the neutral axis. The transverse shear is the maximum at the neutral axis, or pretty much at the, right there. So that right there, and I like to call this tran right there, and set it equal to, and now the, what it, and we might want to write max, like right next to it, to say that it's really, this equation is only for this location right there. And if it is a circular cross section, right, it turns out that the maximum ends up being four thirds V over A. If it's a rectangular cross section, interestingly enough, it turns out to be three halves, right? But but we have a lot of circular cross sections and a lot of stuff that we do. There's other ones that we could look up. And there's a table in Shigley that where I will refer to often to come back to. So once again, we're just trying to reconnect some of these synapses when it comes to different kinds of stresses. And then um, the last one, I sometimes I don't even want to include. I did include here. It's really a special case of transverse shear. And we call it direct shear, when of course obvious is shear. And in here, it's a uniform. And then um, I have like, it, it happens like maybe in the same thing right here, but it's going to be constant across the entire face of this thing. And it's the case where we have scissors, shear. You can think of scissors. All right, so if we have a simply supported beam, let's say, This thing force is acting down, and here's a reaction over here on each side right here. If you bring these closer and closer together, right here, right here's my reaction, here's my reaction, right in there, here's my force, right? If those, if they start to move closer and closer together, that becomes closer and closer to what's happening right here, right? Where we have the force and reaction are very side by side to each other. And it's really sort of the, the what's taking place if you have like a bolted joint, right? So like if you had like maybe a flat plate and a flat plate right here, and you, and, and you drilled a hole in between there and maybe you put a bolt at the nut right, right in there, right? And you pull these guys apart. It would try to shear that bolt apart. It would try to cut it. Well, when we go and we call that direct shear, and we just go ahead and make the assumption that it is approximately equal to V over A. We just, instead of saying, well, it has this parabolic distribution, uh, we go ahead here. So we're not going to do that in this class. Uh, we're going to do that in ME 470 uh, because we're going to have bolts or we're going to have like a keyway is a good example, right? Like I said, where a keyway is, is like this little square piece that gets put inside of a uh, uh, right in here, right? So um, the action that's taking place in a square key, right, if you could see, you can't really quite focus in on that. Right, so they, if that's a square key that's being placed inside that, what that key is facing right there is that square key is going to fit inside here. Okay, so here is the uh, interface uh, between there, and this gear is going to be pushing onto that, whereas this shaft is going to be pushing onto that face. So right along that little boundary inside there, it's facing this shearing action, and that is direct shear, right? But once again, it's sort of like a special case of this transverse shear, which is taking place all the way along here, okay? So remember that we had a shear diagram 
that that uh, accompanied this, right? That looked like this right here. So like this is the value of the shear that's taking place in this section right there. And it's taking place right there along the cross section. Like if this was a rectangular cross section right there, right? Here would be the neutral axis. And if we were going to plot, it actually has a, like a little plot like that right there. It'd be shearing would be happening right here. And that shearing is really related to, um, and I think I actually have this in a better slide uh, later on. It's really the sort of the glue uh, inside the piece that's keeping it together. If you were to take a stack of paper, like this right here, or take a stack of paper, and you bend it, you'll notice that you have a, a slant, all these slant right here. That's because they're all rubbing against each other. All, each piece of paper is sliding against each other. But if you put glue inside in between each of these pieces of paper, you could still bend it. It's going to be a lot stiffer, but they won't be allowed to slip. Well, what's happening to that glue is it's trying to shear. That is transverse shear. It's the part, it, it's the little cubies that are sliding up against each other internal loads that are resisting that bending and it's causing transverse shear right so um this is sort of a review of all of those topics and i you know the big scheme of things i'm going to stop the video and make separate ones for some of these other topics and i'm not going to spend as long in class on some of these topics, but I'll refer back to the videos if you're confused onto things, because this is a lot of information to try to uh, digest and review altogether. So I made a 30 minute video just talking about this one page. Woo wee, I need to go much faster than that in class to be uh, efficient. But I do understand that people, they need to organize these thoughts so that we can use them. We need to reconnect synapses and organize the thoughts. So uh, let's call it a quits on this.